Hey, welcome to a brand new video. And in this video, my whole aim of this video is to share with you my story in the most concise and value packed way possible. What I'm going to be sharing with you in this video are the lessons I learned by going from having zero in my bank account to now making over 137K with my social media marketing agency. Now, a few things to keep in mind. First things first is proof because proof tastes good. So here around the screen, you can see my Stripe account, my PayPal account, and the rest of the amounts is through direct transfers. Second thing to keep in mind is I don't have a course to sell you. I only do private mentorship where I work closely with people, but I don't have a course to sell you. So that's the second thing to keep in mind. And the third thing to keep in mind is this is by no means a video where I'm going to be you know, telling you how awesome I am. Uh, quite frankly, this is a video that I wish I would have seen uh, when I started out. Uh, and simply I'm going to be sharing my lessons in a very casual way. Um, you know, some of the ups, some of the downs in a very transparent way. Uh, I'm not going to be painting this incredible great picture of the journey, just being very transparent with you because I've definitely had, uh, you know, quite, quite, quite the downs and quite the ups as well. And just being fully transparent with you uh, on how I achieved this figure that seems so absurd and so unattainable when I first started out. Uh, and so I want you to keep that in mind. And I want you to keep in mind that I'm by no means special. I'm not a, a whiz kid. Uh, this is doable. This is possible. This can be done by anyone. And I'm just a regular guy who put his head down, committed to mastery, and really just put laser focus and channeled all this energy into this one thing for a bunch of time and got a results. So that is that for the intro prelude into the juicy bits. Now a bit about me. Uh, I thought I'd introduce myself. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jaime, and I run one of the leading e-com agencies in the world where we take e-com brands that we truly believe in and we scale them to seven and eight figures. We've got a 360 approach. This is where we work. This is the HQ. My CTO and my brother who actually works in my team is right there in that room uh, taking sales calls and, and working on really cool stuff. Uh, and this is where we work from. So that's a bit about me. And with that being said, let's get straight into the story. And that story begins in college. So first year of college, actually I did uh, two years, right? So I did a, a foundation year and then my first year of college. Now on that first year of university college, whatever you want to call it, on that first year, I started my agency, right? So I was looking for a business model that would generate enough cash flow, enough income so that I could actually take care of my family, take care of myself, quit university and really fulfill my dreams and, and, and chase my passions, right? Sounds cliche, but that, that was really the, the ambition. However, one of the things about me and, and one of the things that I give myself credit um, for is the fact that I didn't just want a business model that would generate a quick buck. Um, I always had this long-term view, right? And so when I was uh, searching for business models, I came across the agency model, the service-based business model. And the reason why I really like that is because not only did it give me the income that I was looking for, right, with insane profit margins and the ability to scale to 10K amount mark, which seemed like this massive figure, right, when I first started out uh, to a 10K amount mark in a seemingly simple manner, right? You only really need to get four or five clients and you could get to a 10K amount mark. Um, and you don't have to have, you know, hundreds or thousands of, of customers for a Shopify store or something like that, right? So I was looking for that, right? But I was also looking for transferable skills. And that's, that, that's one of the things that I knew the service business model would give me, right? It would give me marketing skills that I could then go ahead and apply later on in my entrepreneurial journey to build other brands, to just help people in, in, in general, right? And I knew that these transferable skills would become insanely valuable uh, later on in my life. So I was looking for something that, Yes, gave me the, the income, but also gave me that future component because I was thinking long term and I, I was thinking about the other businesses I was going to build later on in my life. So I went ahead and I started my uh, agency as I was going to college. And that's one of the things that I'm a big, big advocate for. Um, you know, most of my mentees and, and most of the people that I see really crush it, right? They usually start their agency on the side while they have a full time job or a part time job or they're a full time student, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, and Sure, if you quit all that and you start your your uh, your agency and your business, you have that back against the wall component. But the problem is it can put you into a very emotional mindset, which is not great for business because you really need this to succeed, right? So I started my agency while still in university. I signed my first two clients while still in university and that brought home around 1.5, 2K uh, per month. So nowhere near enough, right? But after having a hell of a year with my engineering degree, with, you know, building my agency and really just say no to pretty much every single social plan that I, you know, that, that I came my way. But I decided to quit this top 10 university in the world that I'd worked so hard to get into that my, you know, parents and family were so proud of me for getting into. And I decided to take a step back in society's eyes, go back to my childhood bedroom and continue to build my agency to really scale things up, right? And 
I'm probably gonna make a whole video on the lessons that I learned by dropping out and the, the lashback that I got from family, friends, and how I dealt with it, because otherwise this video will go for hours and end. Uh, but essentially, moved back to my childhood bedroom and decided to scale my agency. So that is the first phase, that is the university phase. Now the next phase is what I've named early beginnings, right? Because I, uh, I uh, note everything down, but early beginnings is the stage of my journey where I was starting to work on my agency full time. And so I would wake up, work my agency for 10, 12 hours a day, and then go back to bed, might pass out. And so in terms of the agency, I started out with a local business agency. What that meant is that I was servicing local businesses. And the specific niche that I was servicing was gyms and clinics. So that was the niche that I was servicing. And keep in mind, I started this agency with a partner who's no longer a partner, okay? And I'll explain why that is. So that actually leads me to some of the lessons that I learned from this initial stage. First lesson, in my humble opinion, you don't need a partner when starting an agency. And the reason why that is, is because there's really no reason why you would need a partner, okay? If, for example, what you had in mind is one does the service, right? So one does, the, for example, if you pick Facebook ads, right? One does Facebook ads for clients and you focus on signing clients. Well, why would you give 50% of the business for that when you could just get a contractor, an incredible contractor, an incredible team member and pay them a fixed salary, right? Uh, for the service while you focus on the other side of, of the business, right? Building systems, building an incredible ecosystem, signing clients, scaling the business, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So my point is, there's really no reason why you would have to give 50% of your business to anyone when starting an agency. Now, if you're starting a tech company, then I could understand that, right? Uh, maybe you need a CTO, a chief tech officer, maybe uh, you're the CEO, uh, maybe you understand that venture capitalists, they like when it's a two man team, right? When it's, a, when, it's, when it's two founders, right? And so now that makes more sense. But when starting an agency, I highly, highly recommend that you go it alone, right? And the last thing that I'll say on that is the reason why I think most people go into partnerships when starting their agency is simply because for most people, an agency, a service-based business model is the first business that you're starting. And so I feel like much of that decision comes from the fact that you don't really feel confident in yourself and you kind of want to be, you know, cuddled in, in a way, right? And, 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 and you don't want to feel lonely. Uh, but trust me, this incredible, incredible power uh, and just happiness in being able to die on your own sword. And you build a complete different level of resilience when you decide to go at it alone. So definitely worth it, okay? Uh, that is my take on partnerships. And that is why I decided to part ways with this person. We're still friends to this day, uh, but that's why I decided to part ways with this person and start my own agency. The other lesson that I learned from that initial stage is that the local business route was not the way to go. And for a number of reasons, I've spoken about this uh, extensively on my channel, but number one, cash flow problems, okay? Local businesses don't have insane profit margins. And so when it comes to investing into the growth, it, it's, it's, it's pretty tough, right? Uh, the second thing is they don't see paid ads or Facebook ads or Google ads, whatever you wanna, whatever service you're offering, right? They don't see that as an essential service. Why? Because they get a lot of traffic just from being located in a specific place, right? Uh, they get a lot of street traffic. They get a lot of elimination traffic, okay? Just people saying like, hey, look, you know, I've got a gym and it's close to my house, so I'll just go to the gym, right? And so it's not an essential service. And the final thing is there's a geographical limitation, okay? So when you're doing local businesses, oftentimes these founders, these business owners want to have that physical interaction. They want to see you in person because that's how they're used to doing business, right? Um, and so that means that you have a bit of a geographical limitation, which severely limits your scope of uh, prospects. So in a nutshell, for the second phase of the year, uh, early beginnings of my agency, I decided to take another step back in the eyes of society. Uh, literally, you know, at the time, I think we were making four or five K per month, which isn't a huge uh, figure, right? But I decided to leave everything. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, I'm, I'm stubborn like that sometimes, all right? And I decided to take another step back, literally start from ground zero, right? And start my own agency so I could die on my own sword. And so I could travel this road, this lonely road myself, right? And, and really build myself. So now going on to the next part of the video, which is the transition. I decided to switch from local businesses to e-commerce businesses, businesses that sell stuff online. And this transition you'll see was one of the best decisions that I've made during my agency career for a number of reasons. Number one, it really fulfilled my ambition uh, with e-commerce businesses. I really felt like I had a tangible impact on the, their growth because we're actually helping them grow, right? We could see the numbers climb up and we were an integral part of their growth because paid ads for an e-commerce business is literally the lifeblood of their business, right? If, if they don't have paid ads, if they don't have, unless they have organic traffic, right? But if they don't have paid ads, it's actually pretty hard to grow an e-commerce business, especially when you're starting out and no one really knows who you are, right? And so that is the first reason why, uh, why uh, 
you know, it was an incredible decision to pick e-commerce. And the second reason, probably the most important reason is because, as I said, results are clear. So there was no question as to the value that we were bringing these businesses. And so as long as we're getting them results, they're going to keep us and they're going to keep paying us money. And also, when results are clear, we could actually ch uh, charge a percentage of the results that we were getting these businesses. And so that, as you'll see in just a bit, that made the whole scaling process of the agency, the revenue, just climb up in, in an unprecedented manner. However, one of the things that I realized and one of the things that I that I learned from this transition where I spent maybe one, two months trying to master the e-com agency model, I'd realized that I'd made a poor decision and it had nothing to do with the e-com side of things. It was the fact that I'd gone too broad. I tapped into the broad e-commerce market and so when it came to competing with more established agencies, e-com agencies that have been around for years at this point, right, it was pretty hard to compete against these bigger dogs. And so what I did is I sat down and I really got crystal clear on my strengths my weaknesses and the strengths and the weaknesses of these bigger dogs that I was competing with. And one of the things that I realized is that these bigger dogs, their main weakness is the fact that they're big, right? They're not very agile. They're tapping into a pretty broad market, right? And sure, they have the authority that they've built by working with a lot of brands, but they don't have the specialization component in a specific sub niche within e-commerce. And so that's why I decided to go ahead and narrow down into specific sub niche within e-commerce. So a niche e-com agency, this is the stage where things really started to kick off. And uh, as you can see, this has been a, it's been a long journey and hopefully you can appreciate that this is the, you know, is it, the love of the game, right? It's, it's, it's what's fun about building a business. The fact that you get a, bit, a few wins, right? Then you learn a few lessons, then maybe you de-skill, maybe you take a step back, you take, you know, you take the lessons that you learn, you learn more lessons and you take these lessons to then scale even further and then the process repeats and repeats. And so, you know, entering this phase, this when I started getting results, it, it took close to three months to sign my first niche e-commerce agency client because this was such a new concept. No one was talking about it or putting out YouTube videos on it, right? I really had to just learn the ropes myself. Um, and so it took me uh, quite a bit of time to sign that first client. If I knew what I knew now, I would probably be able to do that in, in a few days. But I'm glad that it took me almost three months, which quite frankly, it's not too long, but I'm glad that it took me uh, almost three months um, because it really taught me patience. The craziest thing was not the fact that I signed that first client, but the fact that three months later, I'd signed five clients and I was already at 10K a month mark. And there's something that I speak about a lot in the channel is the fact that, look, one of the things about business is when you raise the ports, right? And when you get that initial win, that initial win is the biggest win you'll have, right? Because it really kickstarts that momentum and you start feeling like you're finally an agency owner and that change of self-identity plus the momentum really kicks things up, right? And so the problem is most people just give up completely, right? Before they sign that first line, most people never sign the client simply because they just give up, right? And so when you sign that first line, everything just really picks up and you have that exponential growth if you obviously continue optimizing and you know taking the lessons that you're learning and continue scaling things up. So I got to 10K a month with purely just retainers and I'll talk about the relevance of that. But one of the main things that um, really had a, a massive impact on the growth of my agency was my automated sales funnel. Over those six months, I had an obsession with my irresistible offer, making sure that I had an offer that you know, the, the, the prospects in my sub niche just could not reject, right? Not only that, but the sales funnel, right? How could I get people inside the sales funnel with something that they actually appreciate, right? Something that they actually want to see. And it was different depending on the size of the business. It was different depending on the person that I was reaching out to. It was different depending on the specific category within the sub niche. I could speak about this for hours and end. My mentees can vouch for that. But the main thing to keep in mind is that I just became obsessed with my sales process and the numbers that were coming back constantly optimizing. And once I had that automated sales funnel that could literally churn out demo calls and strategy sessions while I was literally sleeping and I got up to 100 plus meetings every single month consistently, as you can see here on, on the screen, once I got to that point, it really took it to a whole new level because the main reason why agency owners don't scale their agency is because they're not booking enough meetings, right? It seems pretty obvious, but if you're not booking enough meetings, you're not going to sign enough clients. So when I had that automated sales funnel, it really took things up to a whole new level. And so having taken the lessons that I learned from the niche e-commerce agency stage, I developed into an e-commerce incubator. Now that I'd tap into this niche, right? Now that I'd built the authority, now I was in a really good position to compete with these big dogs in the same marketplace. And so I decided to broaden myself up, open myself up to the general e-com space, and really try to dominate it. And we decided to switch things up a bit because I was looking to get into that 50K per month mark. And to do that, I knew that a lot of the money would come from the performance driven incentives, essentially taking a percentage of the money that we're making our clients. And so when we decided to 
uh, structured the deals in that way, that had a pretty big impact on the way we structured the service. So we started focusing more on the 360 approach. We not only focused on one single component of business growth, like for example, Facebook ads, sure, our service was still paid ads, but we would look at their landing page, at how well optimized that landing page was, at their email marketing, their sequences, right? At their Google ads bit, their SEO, their organic content, right? So we'd make sure that we're actually building this brand because the more optimized all those components that had a direct impact on results were, the more money we're gonna make our clients and the more money that we were gonna make as an agency. And that's how we started locking in 10K plus per month retainers. And that's when things really started to kick off and things obviously started to pick up. We got to the 50K per month mark in around five to six months after the 10K month mark. And then six months later, after being a bit stagnant, uh, the three to four months after hitting the 50K per month, I'm sitting here talking to you about how I went from zero to 137K per month, almost doubling our revenue in May. And it's looking like June is gonna be around 150K per month. And so, that is my story. Hopefully you took a bit of value away from it. If you did, it mean a lot if you just go ahead and smash the like button, helps out with the algorithm, the whole channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And hopefully you can take away the main message of the video, which is, look, the entrepreneurial journey is an incredible journey. I absolutely love it. And the fun of it is in the ups and downs. The fun of it is taking the lessons that you're learning as you're scaling up as you're also going down maybe, right? And taking the sessions to transform yourself as an individual and as a result, transform your business. So this was definitely a fun video to make uh, because for me, looking back over my journey, uh, not gonna lie, I'm, you know, I'm quite proud of, of the person that, that I'm, I'm becoming every single day. And that's one of the, the greatest feelings, not, not so much the money, obviously the money's incredible. I'm, I, I, you know, I feel so grateful for the fact that I'm able to take care of my family, my team members, right? Put, put um, uh, food on their table as well as myself and also share my lessons with people, but also, you know, waking up and, and looking at myself uh, in the mirror and, and seeing a better version of myself every single day is quite a fulfilling feeling. But if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, I really recommend you subscribe and hit the little bell icon if you haven't done so already. And speaking of watching more videos, I'm going to leave on screen a video talking about the lessons that I've learned from getting to 137K per month at age 22. So with that being said, I hope everything's going well in your journey and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.